All right, unit two, section two, synthetic division, and the remainder and factor theorems. Okay, so do this now. Yes, without a calculator. I would suggest you pause the screen. Oop. Let's try and clean that up a little bit. All right, 6,423 divided by 18. Okay, to remind you of the parts of this, this is called your divisor. This piece in here is called your dividend. Your answer is your quotient. And then, of course, after you do all your divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, whatever number remains is your remainder. Okay, then I want you to actually check your work. Okay, so whatever your divisor is, so 18 times the quotient you find plus the remainder you find better equals 6,423. Okay, evaluate. And this should really, this number one should really look like, it should be simplify as a set of directions. Okay, so when I look at this, if I'm attempting to simplify this, now this is not a polynomial, and it's not a polynomial, be cook polynomial, because it has that x in the denominator. Okay, so let's check to see if the top is factorable. So I need the factors of negative 5 that add to negative 4. So x plus 5, x my, uh, no, let's try this again. The 5 needs to be negative. So x minus 5 times x plus 1, all divided by x plus 1. Okay, now notice that these x plus 1's cancel, and my original non-polynomial does simplify now to a polynomial. And this would be a linear polynomial because the degree is 1. Now that's fine, but something that we'll continue to discuss throughout the course of this chapter, there's a domain restriction on this. So although the original simplifies to a nice simple line, the domain is that x cannot equal negative 1. Because on my original function, if I plugged in negative 1, it would put 0 in the denominator. And we know we can't have 0 in the denominator. So we'll talk more about those problems in class. Number two, find a function that has a given divisor, a quotient, and a remainder. Okay, divisor times quotient plus the remainder equals my dividend. So now instead of being numbers, we're talking about polynomials. So my function will be my divisor times my quotient plus my remainder. All right, so doing a little multiplying, 3x cubed minus 7x minus 12x squared plus 28. And don't forget about our plus 2. Okay, so rearranging this to be in descending order, my exponents in descending order, 3x cubed minus 12x squared minus 7x plus 30. So that would be my function that satisfies those given conditions. Okay, long division. We're going to do these problems in class. So you do not need to worry about completing them. Um, I am going to move on for the video, but don't worry about doing these necessarily. All right, dividing by synthetic division. So this is what we did in the video yesterday. So for synthetic division, if I'm dividing by x plus 4, then x equals negative 4 is the number that goes in my little box here. So negative 4. Now I use the coefficients in descending order. So x cubed, x squared, my x term, and then my constant term. So for synthetic, bring down. Now I multiply and add. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. I add those together, I get negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. 12 minus 10 gives me 2. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 
negative 8 plus 8 gives me a remainder of 0. Let's clean that up. Looks terrible. Okay, so if I divided, then I need to be able to identify the quotient. So the quotient here drops in degree, so my quotient would be x squared minus 3x plus 2. And remember where those values came from. Those are my coefficients for my quotient. My remainder is 0. Okay, the next one divided by x minus 5, so I put positive 5 for the value that I use in synthetic. x cubed coefficient, notice I don't have a quadratic term, I don't have that x squared, so I put a placeholder of 0. Linear coefficient, constant, bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, now when I multiply 5 times 149, that's 5 times 100, times 5 times 40, or plus 5 times 40, plus 5 times 9. So when I add those together, I get a product of 745. And now when I add these to get my remainder, my remainder is 763. Okay, so quotient drops in degree, 6x squared plus 30x plus 149. My remainder, my remainder is 763. And if you were writing these out, then we would put that back over the divisor, back over that x minus 5. Okay, so our remainder theorem, and this is actually what we looked at in the first lesson. When a polynomial is divided by x minus a, so when a polynomial is divided by a linear divisor, the remainder comes from evaluating that function at a. And where does a come from? It's just the opposite of whatever that value in the divisor is. So if I go back here, my remainder of 0, I could have just as easily found that by evaluating p of negative 4. And that's what we did in the first lesson, right? So p of negative 4 would be 0, and that number appears here. So p of negative 4. That was our synthetic substitution. So now here, 763, that would come from substituting 5 into my original function. And that number, it keeps popping up here, okay? So it's very important. When a polynomial is divided by a linear factor, my remainder just comes from plugging the opposite of that value into the original function. Factor theorem, x minus a is a factor of a given polynomial if and only if p of a equals 0. So what does that mean? If I get a remainder of 0, then whatever number I plugged in, that expression would be a factor. And if and only if, I'm going to draw a double-sided arrow here, because if and only if statements mean just they work either way. Meaning, if I have a remainder of 0, I then know that I have a factor of the polynomial. Or, if I know I have a factor of a polynomial, then I know the remainder has to be 0. So going back to this example, since I have a remainder of 0, that tells me x plus 4 has to be a factor of the original. So x plus 4 times my quotient, times my quotient, has to equal my original polynomial. Okay? Now, in lesson 2, 1, this polynomial was not factorable, the one I had asked you to do for homework. This polynomial here in this example, though, I can find the factors of 2 that add to negative 3. So x minus 2 times x minus 1. So this would be my polynomial in completely factored form. Okay, and this is what we'll, we'll continue to work on that specifically. 
but getting a remainder of zero is very important for being able to factor the, the original polynomial. All right. These problems we'll do in class together. Okay. But I do want you to complete these. Class exercises on page 60, numbers one through four. So for homework, you have those four problems and the original division problem on the first slide. See you in class.